The first lesson in Unit 2 is packaging and shipping. In this lesson, we'll identify common shipping packages and containers used in the commercial printing industry. We will list resources for purchasing shipping materials if you have, ever have a need for that. We will recognize uses for the number out formula, which we call the number out option 1 versus option 2 formula. We will apply the number out formula to calculating how many items will fit in a box for shipping. We will also use that information to estimate the weight of products to be shipped so that if we wanted to, we could get a quote from a, from a shipping service provider. And then most importantly, we will continue to practice the number out formula for calculating how many items will fit on a press sheet. We will use this number out formula during every lesson between now and the end of the semester. We will most often use it to figure out how many items will fit across the press sheet. Um, but there are lots of different applications for it. So let's get started by talking about shipping containers. Every item that is manufactured must be packaged for shipping. Sometimes the manufactured, ma manufactured items are shipped to other manufacturers for further processing. Sometimes they are shipped to a distributor or a store for selling, and other times they are shipped directly to a customer. No matter what the final destination is, every item that is manufactured must be packaged for shipping. Typical shipping containers for the printing industry include boxes, skids, pallets, and what are called Gaylords. Boxes. Boxes are used for finished products. Finished products are generally packed into boxes for shipping. Boxes come in many shapes and sizes and accommodate varying sizes of products. Boxes can be single wall or double wall, offering a digital, uh, additional protection. And as to be expected, the cost of a single wall carton is cheaper than a double wall carton. Skids or pallets. If a job is packed into many boxes, the boxes must be packed onto a pallet or a skid for shipping. It is easier to move one pallet with a forklift than 60 individual boxes. This can save money on your shipping cost. And you can see that as an example in the second image below. There are many cartons or boxes packed onto skids that can be lifted with a forklift and put onto the back of a truck or moved around a warehouse for storage. Gaylords. A Gaylord is essentially a giant cardboard box that sits on top of a pallet or a skid. It allows loose items to be packaged inside. In the printing industry, folded signatures that need to be shipped to a bindery might be packaged in Gaylords. It saves time on the printing end and the binding end to use Gaylords because packing and unpacking folded signatures from boxes takes time. Gaylords also offer a layer of added protection when shipping. Boxes packed on skids will be wrapped in plastic wrap, but boxes packed in Gaylords will have a cardboard barrier between the boxes and the outside world. It is important to know that boxes, just like paper for printing, come in standard sizes. It is not a coincidence that most books are one of a certain number of sizes. Everything is interconnected. Books are produced in standard sizes that match press sheets, press sheet sizes used to print the books, and then those books fit happily into standard box sizes. This doesn't mean you can't design a cool book that is a unique size. It just means that if you want your book to be printed efficiently and then the book to fit into a non-custom box, you should choose a standard book size. Custom boxes can be manufactured, but for a price. So usually it's not effective to have a custom box manufactured unless you're producing a lot of your custom box. There are many resources for purchasing boxes. If you are purchasing large quantities, I recommend sourcing from a local vendor. If you don't order often or appreciate a thorough and easy to navigate website, Uline.com is a great resource for one to two day delivery for your, really your office needs. There's lots more than just boxes. You can use Uline.com at the beginning of a project to see what boxes are available and how much they will cost. This can also be used to work backwards to ensure that the product you're designing will fit snugly into a box without having to pay an upcharge to have a custom box manufactured. So I provided some links here that on your own you can go ahead and click if you want to, um, but they will take you to Uline, the generic website for Uline.com, and you can see there's lots of different things that they have, uh, but also you can go directly to all the different boxes that are available and you can see how they're calling them bulk cargo boxes. These are the Gaylords. Um, there's lots of different shipping options. And then um, the third option gives you 
all of the typical sizes that commercial printers use and you can see all the sizes that are available. You might want to bookmark this or just have it open on your computer because later in the lesson we're going to use this specific uh, page to identify sizes for a box that we're going to purchase. The next few slides will show a sampling of the standard boxes that you can use, aka the things I just showed you if you click on those links. Um, you'll quickly realize that just because printers use standard box sizes or standard book sizes or standard paper sizes, it doesn't mean that the sizes are limited or that there's only a few choices. There are so many to choose from. Uh, and so when you are creating a project or you're working on a project, you should always consider every aspect of what your needs will be, including will the thing that I am producing fit into a box that's, that's standard and available when I need it. So you can see here, we're not going to read through all of them, but there are lots of different book sizes. And I've highlighted a couple here, 18 by 12 by 10. We're going to use that in our example. And 17 and a, and a quarter by 11 and a quarter by 8. We're going to use that size in our examples as well. We can use websites like uline.com to figure out how much it will cost to purchase the boxes needed for a job, but we first need to know how many boxes we're purchasing. I've highlighted box S13311 above in this specific green, uh, screenshot. Depending on a, how many boxes that we are purchasing, we'll pay anywhere from $1.50 a box to $2.02 .02 per box. And we have to keep in mind that we have to purchase them in multiples of 25. So if I need 15 boxes for my project, I need to charge my customer for 25 because I'm going to have to buy 25 anyway. So the purpose of this lesson is to practice the number out formula. And we're going to apply that to figuring out how many items will fit into a container or a carton or a box in our case. The steps that we're going to follow is we're going to identify the, the item size of whatever we're putting into the box, and we need the length, the width, and the depth or the height of the item. Then we're going to identify the container that it's going to go in, the box or the carton that it's going to go in, and we also need to know what the length, the width, and the depth of that item is. Once we have both of those values, we're going to calculate how many out using the number out formula that will fit into the area of the bottom of the box. In this case, it's across a two-dimensional surface. So if we're putting books into this box, what I need to know is how many books can fit across the bottom of the box in one layer. Then once we know how many can fit across the bottom of the box in one layer, we will, for step four, calculate how many of our item can fit tall or vertically inside the box. Like how many can we put in each stack? And then last but not least, we'll multiply the number out across the bottom of the box by the number that will fit vertically up into the box, and that will tell us how many will fit in the total box. And I know that probably sounds confusing, so let's walk through it together. The first step in figuring out how many items, like a book, will fit into our packaging container, in our case a box, is to figure out how many will fit across the bottom of the box. We're going to call this process um, the process of using the number out formula or the process to calculate the number out, which is calculating the number of items that fit across a two-dimensional surface, in our case, the bottom of a box. Uh, this is a concept that will be used in multiple applications between now and the end of the semester. Mastering the process to calculate the number out is vital for success during the second half of this course. So please contact your instructor, if that's me, um, if you're having trouble. Uh, it is essential by the end of this lesson that you really truly grasp the concept of number out before you move on to any future lessons. When calculating how many will fit out, you must test your object size against the box or the 2D surface two times. We first test it if the objects are placed horizontally and then we rotate them 90 degrees and we test it um, vertically. So let me show you what that means. For example, if we wanted to put an 8 half by 11 inch books into a 17 and 1 fourth by 11 and 1 fourth by 8 inch tall box, we must see how many 8 and a half by 11 inch books fit within the 17 and 1 fourth by 11 and 1 fourth box. And then we're going to rotate the book. So instead of putting it in as 8 and a half by 11, we're going to test it as 11 by 8 and a half. 
So what I'm saying is the first way we put this in is we're going to test it in this orientation with 8.5 by 11. And then we're going to rotate all the books on their side. And we're going to try to put it in as 11 across by 8.5. We do this by reversing the orientation. In essence, we're rotating the book 90 degrees to see if we rotate it, if we can fit more books in the box. The formula that we use, so you could you could probably try to guess what this is, but we're going to put it to a formula. The formula that we use to test this is called the number out formula, and we call it the number out option one versus option two formula because we are always going to test our option two ways. So we'll take the size of our, our container, in our case it's a box, so the length and the width of the box, and if we go back here, this box is 11.25 inches across and 17.25 inches um, in the width. So we will test the length and the width of the box, and we will divide it by the length and the width of our item. Then we will take the same exact formula, and we will take the same length and width of the box. It does not change. But this time, we're going to rotate the item that we're putting into the box. So we're going to switch and divide it by the width and the length. When we do this, it will tell us the total number of items that fit in a box with one caveat. It's probably not going to come out to a nice even number. When I divide the length of my box by the length of my book or item I'm putting into the box, whatever the answer is, I'm only going to keep the whole number. If it comes out to 2.6, that means I can put two whole books across the length and 0.6 of a book, but I can't put part of a book into the box. So I'm just going to say that I can put two books across. And then if I divide the width of the box by the width of the item and I get 4.2, I'm just going to say I can put four books along the width because I can't put 0.2 of a book in a box. I can't cut the book up and put more in the box than will fit. Once I have, once I figure out how many will fit across the length and across the width, you multiply those two numbers together and it will give you the total number of items, in our case books, that will fit across the bottom of our container, which is a box. So let's go through an example together. I think it will make more sense. So if we were trying to put those 8.5 by 11 inch books into a box and the box is 17.25 inches by 11.25 inches, the 8 inches is the height of the books. Uh, height of the box and we don't need that so I'm just going to completely ignore it for now. I just want to know how many books will fit across the bottom of our box and the bottom of our box is 17.25 inches by 11.25 inches. To calculate this I'm going to divide the the length of our box 17.25 by the length of our book in this case it's eight and a half. When I divide that 17.25 by 8.5 it comes out to 2.02. .02. I could care less that I could put 0 0.02 of a book across the box. So what I'm going to say is I can fit two books, two eight and a half inch segments across the 17 inch side of the box. Then I'm going to take the, the width of the box, which is 11.25, and I'm going to divide it by the width of the book. In this case, it's 11. 11.25 divided by 11 comes out to 1.02. Again, I don't care that I can put 0 .02 of a book in the box because I can't cut the book up. So I will say that across the 11.2 inch side of the box, I can fit one book. Once I know that the first column of my formula gives me two and the second gives me one, I can multiply those two values together to calculate the total number of books I can fit across the bottom of my box. So in this case, I can fit two books across and only one tall. Two times one equals two. So test option one would produce what we call two out. I can fit two books across the bottom of the box. But I can't stop there. I have to ask myself if I rotate the books, could I possibly fit more inside the box? So we will always test option one and option two. And for option two, we're going to take the same formula and all we're going to do is switch the bottom values. You don't want to switch the top and the bottom because you have to switch one so that you're comparing it against a different side of the box. So let's do that. So we'll take the same formula. 17.25 by 11.25 is our box, but this time I'm going to try to put the 11 inch side of my book against the 17.25 inch side of the box, which means the eight and a half 
uh, length of my book has to go against the 11.25 inch side of the box. 17.25 divided by 11 comes out to 1.56. I could care less that I could put basically half a book in the box because I can't cut the book up. So I will say I can fit one 11 inch side of my book against the 17.25 inch side of the box. 11.25 divided by eight and a half comes out to 1.32. Again, I could care less about those decimals, so I'll just keep the whole number. So I can fit one eight and a half inch length of a book against the 11.25 inch side of the box. So I can fit one across and one tall. So one times one equals one out. And you can see that it's not efficient. If I rotate my item 90 degrees, I basically am just adding a lot of empty space in the box. So whatever answer comes out higher, in our case, test option one was higher, that's what we go with. We would say that we can fit two books across the bottom of our box. When I rotate it and I only fit one, it's an inefficient use of the box. Like it's not, it's not a box I should be using if I have so much empty space around it. You can almost imagine that the book would slide around inside the box when I'm shipping it. And so you can see here, we would go with two out because two is greater than one. I would like you to try an example on your own. So write down the formula for calculating number out. And that is your, your container size, the length and the width, divided by your item size length and width. For option two, it's the same exact formula, but you're going to switch the bottom values so that you're dividing the length of your container by the width of your item. And then you're dividing the width of your container by the length of your item. The bigger thing is always on top, so the container is always on top, and your item size is always on the bottom. Give this next example a try on your own, and then we'll go through the answer together. So if you're gonna try it, pause the video right now, and when you push play, we'll go through the solution together. So in this case, we have a five and a half by eight and a half inch book. It's a smaller book. And we're gonna put it into a box that's eight inches by 12 inches by 10 inches tall. But we're not checking how many books will fit in the box right now. We're just concerned about how many books will fit across the bottom. So for this example, we're gonna completely ignore the height of the box being 10 inches. That's not applicable right now. So our first formula for testing option one would be to take our container size or our box size, which is 18 by 12, and divide it by our book size, which is five and a half by eight and a half. 18 divided by five and a half is 3.27. We don't care about the decimal, so we'll say that we can fit three books across the 18 inch side of the box. So we'll keep three as our whole number. 12 divided by eight and a half is 1.41. But again, we do not care about the decimal, so we'll just say we can fit one book tall inside the box. When we take three and multiply it times one, we get three out. So if we went with option one, we would be able to fit three books across the bottom of this box. But we always test option two. In this case, it's a good thing that we did test option two because if we rotate the book, we can actually fit four books across the bottom instead of just three. And we know that because 18 divided by eight and a half, we switched those bottom values. So 18 divided by eight and a half comes out to 2.11. We just keep the whole number. So we fit two books across the 18 inch side. And then 12 divided by five and a half comes out to 2.18 again. We get rid of the decimal and just say we can fit two whole books across that length. Two across and two tall, two times two, means we can fit four books across the bottom of our box. This concept, the idea of fitting items across a 2D surface, will be used over and over between now and the end of the semester. We're going to use it most often to figure out how many items will fit on a press sheet when we're printing it on press. But for our case in this lesson, what it means is now we know that we can fit, in this case, four books across the bottom of our box. Now we can figure out how many books will fit tall in the box to calculate the total number of books that fit in the box. So let's, let's do that now. So the next step to calculating how many items fit in your box is to figure out how many will fit tall. The formula that we're going to use for that is the height or the depth of the box 
divided by the thickness of your item. So books might be an inch thick. They might be two inches thick. They might be half an inch thick. If you were putting bookmarks in a box, the, the height of the bookmark is very small, but it still has a height. And you would take the, the height of the box you're putting them in and divide it by the thickness of the item. Whatever you get as your answer is the number of items that fit vertically. And just like our number out formula, we don't care about decimals. You can't put part of an item in a box. So whatever the decimal comes out to, you're just going to drop the decimal and keep the whole number. So in this example, this is the same as our first example a few slides ago. Um, we were trying to fit 8.5 by 11 inch books into a box that was 17.25 inches by 11.25 and the height of the box was 8 inches. If I now tell you that the books we're putting into the box are each 1 inch thick, how many books can fit vertically within the height of the box? The formula is the depth of the box, which was 8 inches, divided by the thickness of our item, which I just told you is 1 inch. So 8 divided by 1 equals 8, meaning we can fit 8 books tall inside the box. But that doesn't mean we can fit 8 books in the box. It means that any stack of books that we put into the box can have 8 books. So if we could fit 40 stacks of books, we would say that each of the 40 stacks has eight and we would have 320 books in the box. Let's figure out the second example. We were trying to fit five and a half by eight and a half inch books into a box that was 18 by 12 with a height of 10 inches. If I tell you that the height of the book is 0.6 inches thick uh, or the thickness of the book is 0.6 inches, how many books can fit vertically in any one pile of books that are stuck in that box? Pause the video, figure out the answer on your own, and when you're ready, push play again, and we will review the answer together. So the formula is to take the depth or the height of the box, in this case is 10 inches, and divide it by the thickness of the item we're putting into the box, and we're putting books, and I told you that the book is 0.6 inches thick. 10 divided by 0.6 equals 16.66. We could care less about the decimal because we can't put part of a book into the box. So we would say that the height of the book can hold 16 books vertically inside the box. But again, that doesn't mean that the box can hold 16 books. It means every stack of books that I put in will have 16 books. So if I had two stacks of books, I could fit 32 books into the box. So that's where the last step of our uh, formula comes into play. After you know how many out, how many will fit across the bottom of the box, and then how many will fit tall, we can multiply the number out across the bottom of the box by the number that fits vertically, and it will tell us the total number of items, in our case books, that will fit into our container. So again, let's go back to the first example. We've already calculated that we can get two books out across the bottom of the box. And if you want to review that, it's on slides 12 to 14. And then just a few slides ago, slide 20, we figured out that each stack of books could have eight books. So the formula is number out, which we've calculated to be two, times the number that can fit vertically, which is eight. So two times eight, you can see down here, equals 16 books. So if I was putting these books into a box, each box would have 16. I can use that to figure out how many boxes I need. If I'm printing a million books, I would take a million books divided by 16, and that would tell me, tell me how many boxes I need for my project. So let's practice this for example two. I want you to give this one a try on your own. We've already calculated that for example two, we can get four five and a half by eight and a half inch books across the bottom of the box, and they're thinner books, so we can actually fit 16 books um, tall in the 10 inch height of the box. Knowing that we have four out and 16 tall or vertical inside the box, how many total books can fit inside this box? Pause the video and when you're ready to review the answer, press play. The formula is the number out times the number vertical. In this case, it's four out times 16 vertical or, or tall in the box. Um, 4 times 16 is 64, so every box of books for this project can have 64 books in it.
After we calculate how many items can fit in the box, in our case, we're working with books, we can use that information um, in many ways, including but not limited to the following. We can use it to calculate the total number of boxes that you will need for shipping so that you can figure out how many boxes you have to buy and how much they will cost. Um, it helps you when you're getting pricing for the boxes. You can also figure out how much each box will weigh. If you know the book weighs a pound and there are 16 books in a box, then the box will weigh 16 pounds. You can then use the weight and the number of books and the size of the box to get a price for shipping. Um, you can then also, if, if you're shipping a lot of boxes, you can figure out how many boxes can fit on a, scal uh, a skid or a pallet. And then you could even calculate the weight of that skid or pallet to make sure that it doesn't exceed um, the weight that the the maximum weight that you could use to ship a skid or a pallet. In example one, we figured out that each 17.25 by 11.25 by 8 inch box can hold 16 books. So if we were printing 2,800 books that each weigh 1.25 pounds, we could calculate, and I'm going to give you this information, it's not a requirement for this lesson. Um, we could calculate that 16 books times 1.25 pounds per book means each box will weigh 20 pounds. We could take the total number of books, 2,800 books, and divide it by 16 books per box and figure out that we will need to purchase 175 boxes. We could even take 175 boxes and multiply it times 20 pounds per box so that we would know that the total weight of all of our boxes is 3,500 pounds. If we go to uline.com, we could get pricing for 175 boxes, specifically the S4175 boxes, um, and we could figure out that if we bought them, they would be $1.13 per box. We could also figure out that we have to purchase in bundles of 25, which ends up being perfect for our shipping needs because if we need 175, that is divides evenly by 25. We could take 175 boxes and multiply it times $1.13 per box and figure out that it will cost us $197.75 for those boxes. Uh, and Uline will even tell me that the shipping to get those boxes to my facility is $100.38, uh, which is why I would recommend using a local vendor if you're purchasing a lot of boxes routinely. And then if I was trying to tell my client how much they should be prepared for us to put the books in boxes, I would say that we're going to charge them at least $298.13 because we took the cost of the boxes, $197.75, and added the shipping to it because the customer is going to pay that. And so just, just for the box portion of this job, before I even charge them to put the books in the box, it's $300 just for boxes. If you forgot this step of your process when you were quoting a job to a customer, it is a huge expense to be like, oh, I forgot to include boxes in my quote. And then you have to pay $300 um, for this hidden cost that your client didn't agree to because you told them that everything was fine and good to go and you forgot that you have to pay for the boxes. In this lesson, we used that number out formula, the option one versus option two formula, to figure out how many items will fit in a box for shipping purposes. But the formula is more frequently used to calculate how many items can be printed on a press sheet. Knowing how many bookmarks or postcards or door hangers can fit on one press sheet allows us to figure out how many press size sheets, PSS, you should write that down. We're going to use that, um, that term a lot between now and the end of the semester. Um, will let us know how many press size sheets that we need to print an entire printing job. It then allows us to calculate how much those sheets weigh, which is the next lesson, and then how much they'll cost, which is the lesson after that. And then we can use that to figure out how long it will take to print the sheets, which is the press impressions lesson that we'll work on. So for practice, even though you don't have to be able to do this just now, let's practice using the number out formula, option one versus option two, to calculate how many postcards can print out or fit out on a press sheet. In this case, our postcards are going to be four by six inches and our press sheet size, our PSS, is going to be 23 inches by 35 inches. Option one and option two would take the size of our container. In this case, it's our press sheet um, being 23 by 35. And you can see on the top of option one and option two, the value stays the same. 
To test this, we will divide the length and width of our press sheet by our item size four by six. And then for option two, we'll rotate the item 90 degrees and we will divide by six by four. When we do this, it will give us the total number out via test option one and test option two. 23 divided by four, without even looking at what the answer is that I've already calculated on the right hand side, I know that four times five is 20 and four times six is 24. So I am going to be able to get five postcards across the page, but I will not be able to get six. So I could just say five. If you wanna put it in your calculator, it does come out to 5.75 but we drop the decimal, so we'll say that we can fit five four-inch um, lengths of postcard across the 23-inch side of our sheet. Then the 35-inch side of our sheet divided by six, or the height of our postcard, comes out to five times, uh, six times five is 30, and six times six is 36. So I can definitely get five, but I cannot get six. If you wanna put it in your calculator, it does come out to 5.83. We only keep the whole numbers, so for option one, we can get five across and five tall, which means we'll get 25 out if we use this orientation. But we can't stop there. We always have to test option two. So we'll rotate our postcard 90 degrees, divide the 23 inch length of our sheet by six. This will come out to three and change because six times four is 24. So it will not go in a fourth time. It actually comes out to 3.83. 35 divided by 4 is 8.75. We'll only keep the whole numbers. So 3 times 8 is 24. So option 2 produces 24 out. Whatever answer is higher, we're going to go with for our class. So in this case, we would say it's 25 out. As a little caveat to that, the orientation that you put something on a press sheet can affect a lot of things in printing. So there may be a time where a printer chooses to run the job 24 out versus 25 out. But for our class, we will always just take the larger number for our uh, example purposes. In this case, you can see that when you go with 25 out, you will fit five, one, two, three, four, five, six inch lengths. Um, yeah, five, six inch lengths across the 35 inch length of the paper and one, two, three, four, five, four inch lengths across the 23 inch side of the paper. Try this next example on your own. And if we can all get it right, we can move on to the next lesson. If you're struggling with this concept, please go back and review all four of the examples from this lesson. And if you still need a review, you can always attend your instructor's live info session. So in this example, I would like to know how many three inch by eight inch bookmarks will fit out on a 20 by 26 inch press sheet. When you're done, draw, draw a diagram showing what the imposition or the way the, post, the bookmarks would, would appear on the press sheet. Pause the video and when you're ready, we'll review the answer together. So for this example, our item, our container size, the top value is our press sheet. And our press sheet in this example is 20 by 26. So the top value on the option one and option two will be 20 by 26. Our item size in this case are three by eight inch bookmarks. So we'll divide by three by eight and then we'll flip those values and divide by eight and three. 20 divided by three comes out to 6.66. So we'll say that we can fit six three inch lengths of our bookmark across the 20 inch side of the paper. 26 divided by eight is 3.25. We'll keep the whole number and say that we can fit three eight inch lengths across the 26 inch side. Six times three equals 18. So test option one, the answer is 18 out. But we always test option two just in case we can fit more. In this case, when we divide 20 by eight, we get 2.5, we'll drop the decimal and just say we can fit two across that length. And then 26 divided by three is 8.66. We drop the decimal and we'll say that we can fit eight three inch lengths of a bookmark across the 26 inch side of the paper. When we keep the whole numbers, we get two by eight or two times eight, and we'll get 16 out for option two. Because 18 is greater than 16, we'll say that the correct answer is 18 out. And then here's a visual of what that would look like. We fit one, two, three, four, five, six, 
of the shorter length, the three inch length of our bookmark along the 20 inch side of the paper. And we can fit one, two, three of the longer length, the eight inch side of our bookmark along the 26 inch side of the paper. After completing this lesson, you should be able to identify common shipping packages and containers used in the commercial printing industry. List resources for purchasing shipping materials, whether you use it to see what's available like we did in our lesson or use it to get pricing. You should be able to recognize uses for the number out formula. That's the number out option one versus option two formula. We use two examples in this lesson, calculating how many items will fit across the bottom of a box. More importantly, how to calculate the number of items that can be printed on a press sheet. You should also be able to apply the number out formula in either of the two examples I just listed by calculating how many boxes are needed to ship a printing job um, and then estimating the weight of products to be shipped. And finally, you should be able to calculate the number of items that will fit on a press sheet. If you have any questions about any of this or you would like to just practice some more problems, please consider attending your instructor's weekly live session.